Um, so let me see if it's uh, smooth enough. So here we are at the start practically of the race. As you can see, we are starting at 18th position or 19th position maybe. Uh, and here it is the start. So I have to say, first of all, uh, the most important thing here is that um, everybody was behaving really, really well into this, uh, uh, into this uh, uh, race. So as you can see, we have the start of the race. Uh, let me know if you can see it uh, properly, if it's smooth enough on your screens. So on the start, you see Oru's, everybody behaving, no big movements left and right. Nobody is really trying to be very opportunistic. So that was really a very good thing. Uh, as usual, Oru's is, you know, everybody manages to do it at the start of the race. It's this second uh, chicane here that things become hairy. So as you can see, uh, I'm, I'm moving into the outside. I could stay on the inside, but I'm moving into the outside. Not because there is more space here, but here's the trick, if you can do it, right? So um, the trick here is that on that chicane, you have plenty of space to go wide, right, uh, into... And it's, it's still, you know, it, it is still asphalt down. It's tarmac, so you can go wide. Yes, of course, you're gonna get some big sausages, curbs, very high curbs, uh, but you can go wide. So if you see someone attacking from the inside or accidents happen in front of you, if you are not obviously defending for position because you are in the first positions, but you are way far behind, going to the outside is a very good idea here. Why? Because again, you have so much space on the outside to, you know, put yourself uh, protected and in safety if something, you know, Larry starts to, to happen. And let's see what happens here. So everybody breaks. Everything th seems fine. Okay. So no big deal. But if I wanted and if I needed, as you can see again, once more, there is tons of space here I can go. If someone is coming from the inside, I can go here, no problems at all. So keep in mind that if you are not fighting, you know, for the first position, so you have to defend yourself. Uh, if you have the space, because as you can see, I've managed to put myself into a single lane. There is no uh, cars aside me uh, before the turn. Uh, there are opportunities that I could have, you know, take and go uh, in to the side of some car in front of me, but, you know, it's eight hours race. Why take risks that you don't have to take? Right, so let's see here. We've moved ahead. Um, in the meantime, there's lots of... Uh... So again, you see, I'm, I'm trying to position myself in the middle here, not leaving space to people behind me to think, oh, here's an opportunity, I can get it. You can see here. I'm in the middle. I'm not going really very wide. And now I'm looking at that at the rear. I have nobody, uh, you know, close to me. So I can get a little bit extra space. But I'm not overdoing it. I'm staying in the middle of the road. Well, when you're staying in the middle of the road like that, and obviously the other people behind you are not, you know, right on your rear, uh, glued on, on your rear uh, bumper, uh, you're giving them a signal, you know, you're telling them, you know what, I'm, I'm defending everything. I'm as large as the whole road. Do not attempt, you know. Now, if someone attempts, then you still have space to go wide and let them go if they want them. Uh, but since everybody here is a little bit on the defensive line because eight hours race and nobody wants to risk everybody, you know, great greed right now, great drivers, everybody is attentive, you know, um, giving them also a clear signal that, you know what, all the lines are mine. Do not attempt, you know. It's a good indication and people behind you know what you're doing. So here we go again. And you can see in front of me, they are trying to find out opportunities. Okay, I'm not, I'm not. I have nobody behind me. I have some people in front of me. I'm trying to stay, you know, calm. Now I have some space here, but I'm not really going into his side. I, I will just try to, you know, take the inner side and that's it because I don't want anybody, you know, from, uh, from behind to go inside. 
So I'm just staying here. You see, I'm not even going inside because I know I'm not going to gain anything. The next turn, I'm going to be on the, on the outside. So it's nothing to gain here. So let's stay here. Again, look at that. In the middle of the road, nobody's behind me. And that's it. And now slowly, the cars are starting you know, to, to move and have some space between them. And then you can start thinking, okay, what can I do? What can I do? Am I faster? Can I overtake? Can I? So you, you start thinking stuff like that. But the main thing right now is, okay, let's follow the cars in front of me and see what we can do. Again, look at this. Look at this. So outside, nobody behind me, all right? Nobody. And what I'm doing is I'm not going exactly behind me. I'm staying towards the middle of the road. The road is mine. The BMW is a big car. You know, you cannot, there is no opportunity for you that you're following. And I'm also giving signals at the front if he's looking behind that, you know what, I'm here. Watch out. I mean, I'm having the whole space, right? <laughs> exactly. John Smith says, so, hey, Aris, what line are you taking into the next corner? Yes. That's what you have to do. You have to show people that, you know what, don't, don't attempt. But obviously, to do something like this, you need to know that you are in a grid with people that know how to race. This is also trust for the other drivers. You know, uh, I'm trusting the, the, the drivers because I'm seeing and I'm having all those drivers around me and every and it's one of them is behaving perfectly. Nobody's, you know, taking extra risk. Nobody's doing crazy things. So again, middle of the road. Following my line, no problems at all here. Lots of cars, so, you know, I feel safe, but there are so many cars together, so I know something is about to happen. You know, it's uh, inevitable. So you have to be very alert. Now, possibly nothing will happen, but, you know, you have to stay very alert. And as you can see, everybody's trying to stay as close as possible. I'm not really. As, as much as, you know, as you can see that the rear car is not behind you there is no really much um, i mean you don't have to take big risks here and now we are approaching you know the um this you can and what happens the usual so let's see again so as you can see you remember what i told you when you are coming from a very high speed 250 255 kilometers per hour this is my gap I have to start braking sooner because for the chicane, we're going to be, you know, going inside the chicane at something like 60, 70 kilometers per hour, which is very slow, which means that this gap is going to be very, very short right now. Okay. So I have to uh, break much sooner. And this is exactly what I do. And what's the uh, break, um, uh, the, uh, the, the break bar, uh, right down here, okay, you will see that I'm braking hard and then modulating to get closer to the car in front of me. Again, on the chicane, you have space on the outside. So it's better for you if you don't need to defend your position to stay on the outside and see, you know, put yourself into safety. Again, it's the same situation as at the other turn, at the other chicane we talk about later. So look at that. Full. 100% braking, okay? And then, you see you see that slight modulation. I just lift a little bit my braking and then down again. I will show you again. So look again here, okay? Once more, you will see full braking, lifting a little bit, and then braking again. Now, here, as you can see, something is not going perfectly well, because you see that all the cars are stopping really hard, right? So what I'm doing is, as usual, I'm pointing on the outside. When you're seeing the cars coming onto you, I've seen many people go into the inside and try a desperate overtake, which is not an overtake. It's, uh, it's an attempt to avoid, uh, you know, Panterino, <laughs> uh, the, the car in front of you. But if you go into the intake, there is no way you will avoid him. You will have to go onto the high curb, you know, the sausage, 
on the high curb, the, your car will jump around, you won't be able to stop the car, uh, the car in front of you will try to close the turn because it has nowhere to go. So this is the worst thing you can do. When you are seeing that the car in front of you is, you know, stopping harder than you have imagined, I've seen many people go into the side, don't ever do that. Now, obviously, if you have someone else on the outside, then tough luck, that's it. But if you are in that position and you see someone and you see the whole, you know, train of the cars getting slower and slower because something happened, you know, many people are going inside, okay? And don't do, don't do that. It's, it's the worst thing you can do. It's, the accident is, you know, guaranteed. So what I'm doing here again is I'm seeing, okay, something is wrong, you know, uh, we won't be able to do the turn on, on our usual uh, speed. So what I'm doing, I'm starting pointing, you can see also my steering wheel here, starting pointing to the outside. Okay, to the outside. So, and you can see the, the result here. So, I'm going on the outside. Now, I know that I'm on the outside. I have no issues. So, I will start turning because I know that I'm way too much on the outside. Uh, the outside here is safe because you can see so much space around here. Okay? And it is very safe and it turns out to be extremely safe because what is happening here, there is an accident and cars are spinning. All right? And because cars are spinning and I'm on the outside, I won't, I won't hit them, you know. And you see the guy in front of me also has the same mentality, says, okay, what can I do? Go to the outside as much as possible. And that's what we do. Going on the outside, and we are safe, okay. Now, obviously, you always, it's always a matter of luck, right? It's not like, oh, but Aris, you... You did all that, you seem to be so intelligent and so good and so agile and whatever, and you predicted everything, but if you had a car on the outside, you would be dead. Yes, of course. I'm not telling you that do this and you're always going to be safe. You need, you need to be on the correct position, possibly, okay? And if you are on the correct position, you have more possibilities. It's a probability game, right? You have more probabilities to stay safe because you have more space to to deal with okay to to avoid to take evasive action all right so it might go terribly wrong it might go terribly wrong uh, but you might make it and you have more possibilities to do so in that situation and so from now on we're just you know starting um, driving and uh, doing our job so what is our job this time so here's the situation. As you saw, we did the first lap with map, echo map um, one, because we needed, you know, the power uh, to, uh, to uh, stay with all the, the cars and the train of the cars and everything. And now we are down to map two, and we will talk about that in a minute. But as you can see, we have two cars in front of us that are slower than our pace, okay? And they are already, you know, trying to uh, uh, duel each other and gain positions. So I'm getting closer. I'm starting to study. So here's the thing now. Um, here's one big thing that seems so easy. When I will tell you this, everybody will say, oh, yeah, sure, Aris. I mean, anything else that is, you know, Captain Obvious, right? And um, you see again here. Go to the outside. Don't go in the inside. Go to the outside. And um, and obviously, yes, I, I will, you know, uh, seem that I'm just the captain on views here. But it is very, very important. And the more you, you, you try to think about it and you have this mentality, the better it is. So what is that? I've seen many people trying to see, okay, I have a car in front of me. I'm in 18th position, but in reality, I have pace for... P10, P5, P1, I don't care, whatever, okay, whatever. So I have to overtake everybody as fast as possible because I need to, you know, not lose the train in front of me. This is the worst thing you can do for your race, for your safety, for your race outcome, for everything, for your performance, for everything. So um, what is the correct mentality? The correct mentality is I am where I am. Okay, for whatever reason, doesn't matter. My adversary 
is not my opponent. It's not P10. It's not P5. It's not P1. I can be the best driver in the world. Who cares? My adversary right now is the guy in front of me. You have to concentrate only and only on the guy in front of you. Okay. Study him as if he is the best driver you've ever seen. Even if it's, I don't know, five seconds slower than you. Doesn't matter. Study him as good as you can and be very careful and overtake him as good as you can, as correctly as you can, as safe as you can. Okay. This mentality, this uh, kind of thinking about the race will save you in the long run. Okay. Because I've seen it to so many people. So many people, oh, but I'm, you know, I'm lapping two seconds, three seconds faster than the guys in front of me. I have to overtake them as fast as I can because I need to be uh, uh, at, at the front, right? So that's the worst thing you can do. The worst thing you can do. Concentrate on the car in front of you and only on that. Not even on the second car in front of you. Only on the car in front of you. This is your opponent, all right? So what we were doing here now. Now, the trick here is that um, this was a, um, so let me switch a little bit. So this was a, a eight hours race, okay. And it had practically um, no big, no, no small, uh, stint limit for the drivers. The stint limit for the drivers was something like uh, three hours, two hours, something like that. So you didn't have to, you know, make a pit stop every hour. There was no such rule. You could do whatever you want, practically. Now, hmm. sorry. Now, why that was important? Well, it was very important because uh, now it was eight hours, which means that if you had to pit every hour, right, you had to do seven pit stops and eight stints, right? Seven pit stops, eight stints. But having no um, stint limit, time limit, stint driver stint time limit, uh, meant that your only limitation was practically the fuel consumption of the car, right? And so with Santa, uh, we uh, uh, with with Santa, we thought about that. We said, okay, so we're not going for the win. You know, uh, we know that there are much much better drivers and teams uh, and everything. We're going for the fun. But you know, when you're going for the fun and you are with a decent pace, you're not that bad, you know. Uh, it's the best opportunity to also have fun and think creatively uh, about about the whole thing. And so we started, you know, looking around at the cars and what we could do, and we found out that the BMW, uh, if driven properly with EcuMap 2, instead of consuming 3.85, 3.80, 3.80 liters every lap at Spa, with EcuMap 1 and, you know, pushing as hard as you can. Uh, with EcuMap 2, it would consume something around 3.52, 53, depending on the situation. 3.52 uh, liters every lap. And why that was important? Because it permitted us uh, to do one hour and over 20 minutes Per stint. And one hour over 20 minutes per stint meant that we were capable of doing seven stints and six pit stops. So one pit stop less than more or less everybody else. Now, we knew that there were some Bentleys on the race, and we knew that the Bentleys had 135 liters uh, fuel. Um, which is a lot, you know, fuel tank. Uh, the BMW only has 125, but the Bentley needed to be filled up with 135 liters, and you still needed to push with EcuMap 1 to stay uh, in, in, you know, and be competitive. While the BMW in EcuMap 2, 
in our hands could do very consistent lap times, lap after lap, uh, and consume much less, much less. Uh, so we had a plan. So how we do that? Well, first of all, you could use uh, you could use many many. Um, there are many uh, applications out there that can help you with that. Uh, the first thing that you have to do is you know you have to go into practice and do uh, some laps with EQMAP one and EQMAP two and find out what is the consumption of the car. The consumption of the car gets updated every lap. You know you can see it on the HUD and you can see how much you are consuming. Um, and as I said, um, you can. You, you, we have now many many applications out there from you know made from people uh, that are very very good and helping the community. So for example, uh, let me see. Ah yes, you you could use for example, uh, you could use if you go on the sim grid, right? Uh, you could use their fuel estimator. Let me post the link here. Here it is. So this is one of them. You can go here. And you can put your uh, total race time, your average lap time. It will show you the lap, the total laps, and the fuel per lap. You can put everything. So, for example, what we did here is simply you put one hour, 20 minutes. Okay, this is our stint. We want to do a stint like that. Our average lap time, we measured it would have been something around 2, 220. Okay, 220. And so it shows that we needed 40 laps or something like, oops, 220. Right, so 35 laps, and we know that we were consuming something like 3.52. And here you go, what it says here: total fuel needed for our stint of one hour 20, 124 liters. Okay, so we knew our our fuel tank on the BMW was 125. We were needed 124. Obviously, every time we did full fill up, uh, and we've managed to do a little bit extra. Or you could use the ACC fuel calculator desktop. You can find it here, a race department. This is another very, very nice uh, utility. Again, you can find it here. All right. Uh, very, very nice utility for uh, the fuel estimation. You can use that too. Uh, again, uh, and the latest one that I have to, to show you because it's really, really nice, the, developed by Sylvain Villette. Uh, and... Um, this is again a web app, but he also made uh, an Android application. I don't have Android, but if you have one, uh, you can you know download it and have it on your cell phone while you're driving. It's amazing. This is even more advanced. Uh, you can select, for example, the car and uh, the circuit right here. And uh, if you if you go and, for example, select eight hours here, right? Formation full, uh, mandatory pit stop zero. Okay. So max stint duration, 1 minute and 20, average lap time, 220, something like this. And fuel used is 3 and uh, 55. Okay, 3 and 52. If you go, not only it gives you how much fuel you need, but it tells you also how, much, how many pit stops uh, you have to do and how many stints. And so on. So this is really, really great. I think it's a little bit on the optimistic here, which says 103 um, uh, on the race start, 103 liters. But I don't know. Uh, and the strategy. I mean, you you can find extra stuff here uh, and see if you could improve or not. Uh, very, very nice uh, application. He's still developing, so. You know, have a look and uh, watch it. Now, okay, so this is what we thought about it and how we did it. So how we did it was in the following uh, way. Now, as you can see, obviously, at some point we, we started, you know, overtaking people. Uh, but at some point we managed to go behind this driver. I think it's Mirko Lucchesi, I think, uh, with his Bentley. All right, and we were doing pretty similar lap times at some point, okay. And here's the deal now, when you're doing similar lap times, okay. Now, here, of course, we are at the start of the race, so we are not exactly sure if our 
strategy will work 100%, so we took it a little bit easier. Uh, but in any case, um, in such races that they are so long, okay, and you have a strategy, if you're doing similar lap times with the car in front of you, yes, it's true that if you start pushing, you can get closer to him, make him some pressure, and possibly overtake him, all right? But if the lap times are similar, um, for the strategy of the race, it's much better to let him about a second of gap and start following. You don't have to get very, very close. Follow him. At, at least for me, it works really, really nicely. It permits me to focus a lot. I have a benchmark in front of me, you know, and I'm I'm managed to uh, I'm able to focus on my reference points because I have space, and in the meantime I also have a car in front of me that I see that uh, you know it doesn't go away or it doesn't get much closer. So this is a very important and to me, let's say intelligent uh, strategy to do. Uh, you don't always have to drive 100% in such long endurance races. You don't have you know to gain each position possible, no, especially if you're down into 15th place. I mean, why, right? You know that the other cars will start stopping, you know, earlier than you. You know that you have to go uh, longer than the other cars, so your tires also, you need to keep your tires fresh and everything. And so this is what we do, okay? And it pays out because uh, after, you know, you see one hour here, Okay, we're one hour ahead, and we are still in the same, more or less, <clears throat> sorry, we are still in the same, more or less, distance. Um, we are starting to, you know, making more interesting lap times. We are still a little bit slow, but we knew that the BMW is suffering when uh, the race is, is very, very, uh, 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 very hot, when, when the abend is hot. Uh, this car suffers particularly when uh, the temperature of the ambient and the surface of the track is hot. So we knew that, okay, we're a little bit slow in the lap times, but going further uh, with the race, uh, when the night comes, uh, the car will become faster and faster. So fast forward a little bit, and we are now five minutes, okay? So it's uh, one hour and uh, 15 minutes. Everybody practically has done a pit stop. Uh, and uh, you can see we have, you know, uh, back markers already, one up down, because they have done a pit stop. And the pit stop is very important here at, at Spa because it's more than two minutes, right? So, um, so here we are, right? And we keep on following... Uh, Lucchese. That's what we're doing. We are both doing around 20 highs, 20 mids, something like that, and we just keep following, and we are already at the sixth position, sixth position, because everybody has already pitted. Okay. But were we fast enough in, in that conditions? Well, in a minute, uh, Lucchese will go, you know, uh, will pit himself, So here goes in, okay, and we continue. So he has to be that one hour and twenty-eight uh, and eighteen minutes, and we'll keep on going for at least you know one lap or two laps, you know. Uh, so our strategy works even better than the Betleys right now, and we were just on the first stint, which means that we also have the full rolling uh, start to do in a very long circuit like Spa. So everything works perfect at this point. I'm asking for, for Alfredo, for Santa to, uh, you know, to request him for, for the driver's swap. And the first stint is a average, but perfect for the strategy. Uh, so you can see already that I have free uh, air now and I'm starting to push. So my delta is going down uh, and everything is, you know, everything works properly. So pit stop. As usual, you have to train, you have to practice your pit stop, you have to be good enough, when to stop for the pit limiter, how to position your car, everything has to be perfect. And what happens is that after the pit stop here, Santa gets behind the wheel, okay, he goes out, 
and we are in 11th position. In just one stint of consistency, uh, of perfect consistent driving, right, we gained from 18th positions, uh, from uh, 20th position up to 11th position with the pit stop. It's that you can see me there, you know, uh, being very, very happy about it. So everything worked properly. We can even, you know, afford to lose a position. And you can see here at some point we are losing position. Now, unfortunately, Santa had, uh, you know, got a little bit nervous with everything. His uh, pedals were working properly, by the way. So he wasn't uh, having 100% of uh, range on his pedals. So at some point he binned it and we had... Um, uh, and we had uh, an accident uh, and he had to pit stop again to repair the car because it was really, really bad, badly damaged. And so we had our first share of bad luck in the race. Okay, So it wasn't, not everything went perfectly. But luckily for us, uh, right after the pit stop, Santa was right on, on, on his game. Uh, he managed to, to focus properly and he started, you know, going faster and faster and faster. He did an amazing stint and uh, again, very, very consistent. Uh, we went down to 16th position, right? Uh, because, uh, because of the extra pit stop. And then he had a genius stroke. Now, into this, um, into this endurance race, uh, the liquid made something that Honestly, personally, I really liked it. So practically, they implemented a virtual safety car, virtual full course yellow, practically. So we had everybody had to be on on, a, on their server uh, at the TeamSpeak, and if a car was having uh, lots of damage, okay, and it was you know uh, moving very very slowly uh, in the in, in the circuit. Uh, the race direction would uh, found out and they would call everybody via TeamSpeak and tell them full course yellow 30 seconds, full course yellow 20 seconds, full course yellow 10 seconds and by 10 seconds you had to maintain your position and slow down and 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 you had to put the pit limiter 50 kilometers per hour and go at 50 kilometers per hour. And until until you know the uh, uh, the uh, race direction would tell would tell you uh, full could full could yellow out by five three two one four three two one go okay so that was uh, that was really really cool this is something that shows you how you know a good race direction can you know create extra uh, conditions uh, and adventures when you are doing races. Uh, honestly, I enjoyed it. Uh, obviously, some people, you know, complain about it and didn't like it, but it was the same for everybody. And as in real races, some people, you know, take advantage from it and some people, you know, get more unlucky. So what happened here is that at some point, um, we had this uh, full course yellow, right? Uh, oops. Now here I'm asking right now because we have the first cool yellow, okay? And so Alfredo says, I'm, I'm going in for pits and we are at our exact position. We can go in. We had some extra laps to do, but, you know, Alfredo says, I go in for pits. So I'm asking the race direction, can we do pits during full course yellow? And they said, yes, of course. And so he goes in for pits during full course yellow, right? And here's the thing. Uh, he goes in for pits. We driver swap. I go out again, right? Perfect pit stop and everything. I go out again and I have lost like one place and we have already done our second pit stop and people haven't done pit stops yet. And as I'm going out, full screw yellow goes out and we move again. So that was our first share of luck. That was luck because we managed to do our pit stop during full course yellow. Uh, so you need also luck. From now on, okay, um, what happens is that we start driving like a clock, you know, uh, extremely consistent, lap after lap, lap after, lap after lap, and as the temperatures go down, the car becomes faster, and we also become faster slowly, so we go from low 
from high 20s to low 20s to high 90s to mid 90s to low 90s and at the, at the end of the, uh, of the race we even managed to do some high 18s with the car full loaded so this is the situation here and you can see uh, that we're already at uh, two 19s here in the dark and we're in fifth position and we keep on pushing and pushing and pushing so I'm, no, I'm not gonna make this story very very long what again I want to tell you is it doesn't matter how fast you are all right so it doesn't matter really how fast you are it doesn't matter um, if if you are you know um, you can win or you want to go for you know mid uh, grid uh, end position prepare your race learn your car learn the circuit learn the rules of the of the race okay be opportunistic try to find out if you can do something creative okay we weren't the only ones that tried this thing others tried this thing too and here comes the next advice try to be constant consistency is the key for long races this is not sprint race where you have to do everything in one hour this is eight hours race you know uh, even for shorter races, but still long, like two or three hours, consistency is the key. Try to be consistent. Don't take extra risks. Uh, know your place and focus on your direct opponent, not at the whole grid. Don't try to reach top three. Focus on the guy you have in front of you. You manage to overtake that guy. Fantastic. Amazing. Focus on the next guy. You've managed to overtake that guy. Excellent. Great job. Focus on the next guy. I don't care if you are five seconds faster than the guys in front of you and you want to win the race. You ain't going to win the race if you are focusing at the first position, you are in 10th position. So one guy at a time, focus there, try to overtake. You cannot stay behind. If you see that you have to stay behind because you cannot overtake, then get some gap. Use it as a benchmark and follow him. Stay there, lap after lap after lap. It many things can happen. Many things. If you having the guy in front of you as a benchmark, you can focus instead of you know trying to find a place to overtake. You can focus on saving your tires, you know, steering wheel inputs, uh, pedal inputs, everything. Save your tires after half an hour, thirty minutes on your stint he might be in trouble and you might be in a much better position and you can overtake him and go away because that's important. It, it doesn't, it's not enough to overtake the guy in front of you and then stay there because he will try to overtake you uh, again, you know, and that puts everybody in more, in more risk and on a long race, that's, that's a bad thing. So that's, that's what you, that's what you have to do.